Let's talk about screwdriver antenna controllers in a mobile environment. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott, call sign KE4WMF, and this review is way past due. I've had my MFJ1924 screwdriver antenna controller for about three years. I bought it around the same time as when I bought my Scorpion Mobile HF antenna, and later I replaced the 1924 with an automated controller that measures SWR, positions the antenna, and then stores that memory location. It's got a small remote control head, and that's what I really liked about it. But in the end, I felt that the technology in the automated unit was too temperamental in my particular mobile installation. It routinely failed to tune, had to be reset, or emitted annoying codes to indicate that there was a problem. So I took it out and reinstalled my 1924. I suspect that plenty of screwdriver antenna owners are wondering why use an antenna controller at all? Just listen for the noise to peak. Let me show you how that works real quick. What I'm going to do is I have tuned it to a frequency that has no signal, at least not right now, it doesn't have a signal. I'm going to turn it up so you can hear the noise, and then I'm going to run the antenna up on past it. So I'm going to let you listen to the peak, come up, and then go back down and demonstrate how I could then just go down. I'm going to try to, I'm going to just tune it in manually and see how close I come. So here, check this out. So here I am, 20 meters. Here's the noise floor. This volume's turned up pretty good, so... Uh, it sh you'll hear it come up when the noise floor picks up. So here, check this out. Hear that? All right, it passed. I also saw the S meter uh, go up and then come back down. So let me go back down. Right there. That there sounds pretty close I don't think that's it though I'll move it to AM for tuning KE4 WMF let's see all right so I was actually very close now my tune is a little off because I'm sitting on top of rebar usually I can tune 20 meters pretty well but where I'm parked I'm sitting on top of rebar and I'll talk about that in a minute so you saw it climb on past the 40s and into the 50s because I let it run. I don't remember what the number stored here is. So let me just push the button and see where the antenna goes. There, so it would have gone to 47 if I had just pressed the two to go to, uh, to 20 meters. By the way, here's how I have it tuned. Uh, the one is 17 meters, two is 20, three is 30, four is 40. Can you guess what five is? No, it's, uh, it's, that's 75 meters. And so the one, I used to have the one stored, it was the stow position, but then what I discovered is I can just press and hold this, the two buttons here and reset it, and it'll just drive to its lowest position and then reset my counter. So there's dual benefit to that because then I can just put the antenna, the, when it goes down to the bottom, it's already reset to zero. If I've missed any pulse counts, they're cleared out, it's no big deal. So yes, the antenna can be positioned manually with the included rocker switch. Just listen for the signal or band noise to peak, stop the antenna, and then fine tune with the transmitter. However, I, I really appreciate the freedom of being able to press a button and focus on other things during antenna motion, whether it's driving the car or perhaps setting up a log before I begin an operation. And if I'm driving, sometimes it's difficult to hear the, the noise floor come up because it's kind of noisy in here. This car is louder than most others because it's tuned for fun. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I want to make it really clear that I am not bashing automated antenna controllers, especially not the one that I removed. I'm leaving the brand name out intentionally, but if you search my channel, you'll see which one it is. I think is well built and relatively easy to use after a moderate install and setup. It just didn't suit me. 
I'll make a few comments about it, but what I'm intending to do here is compare and contrast between the two products that I've owned and used. With that said, here's why I like the simplicity of my MFJ1924 over the more sophisticated antenna controllers. My Scorpion is mounted to a trailer hitch that's relatively close to the ground. It's not an ideal location, but it's the best option on my small car. Being close to the ground, my SWR is affected by surroundings that may not matter with other mobile antenna mounting locations. Examples of some of the elements that may affect my tune include the steel rebar that's within concrete roads or parking surfaces, including where I'm sitting right now. Let's see, roadside guardrails, wet roads, and even the traffic around me. Initially, that controller used active tuning to find a coil position with good SWR, which is good, but once the position is stored, all tuning in the future comes from a memory location rather than active SWR tuning. As a result, the antenna positions stored by my automated controller were often inadequate unless I was in exactly the same location as when I stored the antenna position. The antenna frequently needed to be fine-tuned or retuned manually. All right, so the 1924, MFJ1924, it also requires fine-tuning. So what's the big deal, right? Well, my automated controller would frequently emit a fault code and then just stop working until it was reset. And resetting that controller, it drives the Scorpion to the upper limit and then to the lower limit, and then it's ready for another attempt to a tune. It takes about two minutes to do that. And so if the tune comes close, then I still have to press the soft touch up and down button to attempt fine tuning. The flashing LED indicated that the antenna motor is turning, but there's no counter or anything like that to indicate which direction is turning or how far it's moved. On the other hand, the MFJ1924 is very easy to program. I find a frequency in each band to store. Usually I choose a frequency that's in the center of my privileges on each band. I use the up or down button to adjust the antenna coil manually until there is an SWR match. And then I press or hold the number of the memory location that I want to use for that band or frequency. Once a position is stored, an easy press of the applicable button will prompt the controller to move the antenna coil to whatever position is stored. I have an immediate indication if something's not working, and usually that's in the form of the counter not moving. Once the antenna is in position, I can then check SWR with the transmitter and fine tune things. Operating the 1924 reveals what I think is its best point particularly in a mobile setting. The large, old-school, clunky buttons are easy to see, even in the dark, and easy to press without bumping anything else. There's enough space between the buttons to avoid accidentally pushing the wrong button, and their touch is very light. The display counts up or down as the antenna moves, and if I know where the antenna is supposed to stop, and I have some of these positions memorized, then it's very easy to know if it's almost there or if it is past the position for some reason and needs to be stopped, which can be done without causing an error. Let's face it, most screwdriver antennas miss a pulse count or two from time to time. I've read this kind of thing on different antennas. Maybe it was the controllers that were miscounting. There's just no telling. It just kind of happens, I think. Resetting the counter on the 1924 is very fast and easy. All I got to do is press and hold the up and down buttons simultaneously for a few seconds. The antenna will drive to its lowest position. It doesn't go all the way up to the top and then all the way to the bottom like it did with the automated one. It drives to its lowest position, resets the counter to zero. So it's ready to go within 30 seconds and even faster if the antenna was tuned to a higher frequency. It moves the antenna only when I press a button. Sometimes I think about trying out the MFJ-104. The MFJ-104, it's kind of cool because it will, when you switch bands, it will just move the antenna to the band that you're working with. 
But sometimes I don't want that to happen. I I will put my antenna all the way to its lowest position because of where I'm driving, whether it's trees or I'm getting ready to go through a drive through or something. And so I want all of my antenna movement to be completely intentional, nothing automated. So I will sometimes move to another band on the radio, listen to see what I hear. And then if I hear something that interests me, then I will tune the antenna. Otherwise, I like it to stay pretty still. Let me show you how easy it is to operate this controller. Since I am tuned for about 15 meters, let me go on down to 15 meters just to demonstrate. So here I am, 15 meters, that's zero or still position. And what I do to uh, fine tune or check is I key up, okay, E4 WMF, and then I check it's, it's, the tune is good. So that's basically the bottom line here. Now, if I were to try to tune to say, 12 meters, this antenna can't go low enough to tune that in. So check this out, KE4 WMF. So that's a little higher than what I would want to operate. And 10 meters is out of the question. But then if I go to 17, so there's 17, tune. And by the way, tune is, again, center of my band privilege and AM as well. So you'll see that it's a little off. All right, check this out, KE4 WMF. And then I just move the antenna up a little bit. And there it went. That's, and again, I'm on rebar. It usually tunes better than this. So that's that's all I'm doing here, right? And then when I'm ready to operate, I just roll that over to there. Now this frequency is the lowest end of my operating privilege. So all I, all I could do now is just start scrolling along. And again, when I go to 20 meters, I come to 20 meter tune. Now what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna hit the button. I'm not gonna hunt and tune like I did with 17. So right about there is where it needs to be. And if I do a quick test, KE4 WMF, it is off a little bit, but again, I'm on rebar. So that's that's not bad at all. So I'm on now I'm tuned. I go to 20 meters and then I start operating. So if I go to 40 meters, I'm gonna just press this and let it run. And so 40 meters is a longer trip than the, the, the higher frequencies, the lower end of the antenna movement. So this, this is when it's nice to just push a button. I can work on my logs or get something reorganized, get my headset on or whatever while this moves. So now it's there. This will tune, check this out. Okay, E4 WMF, see how far off it is. So then I just go in there and I dip it and look at that. The rebar is not affecting this at all. So now I'm right there, right? And remember, I said something about the clunky buttons. Look how, how much space is in between all of these. So if I hit that, or let's say I miss, right? Oops, oops. And then all I have to do is hit the button again and, and it stops. This is way easier. And I, I know even easier would be not to have a, a tuner at all, just to do it all manually. But I like the automated aspects of all this. So let me go on up to 80 meters. Now, 80 meters is quite a longer trip. The five is for 75 meters. I'm gonna press it and you're gonna see this counter is gonna go up and it is a much longer trip to get the antenna way up there. And again, I way more time. I'm gonna let this go in real time so you can see how long it takes. It's not, it's not a short duration. So this is a period that I could, again, work on my logs, uh, fidget with the camera if I'm working with the camera or gosh, anything but press and hold the button and listen for noise because I'm, I might be busy, I don't know. Look at that, it's still going. I don't remember where it's gonna stop. It's, it's getting close though. Or not. So here I'm probably off, let's find out. This is KE4, look at that, it's way off, let's see. There. So sometimes you just have to guess a little bit and I got that pretty close. It's even going to bring in 80 meters, so check this out. This one here. KE4 WMF, let's get that down here, here we go. How about that? I don't know, what do you think of all of this? Feel free to ask questions below. I will do my best to answer 
As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.